Dash here with Rollin' Bones. Today I'm going to talk about a role-playing game that we have mentioned a little bit in the past. We're going to talk about GURPS, and GURPS stands for Generic Universal Role-Playing System. The GURPS system allows you to play any genre, any setting, and has rules to mold itself to that situation, and that is, in a nutshell, what separates GURPS from most other RPGs. Traditionally, games like Dungeons & Dragons were set just in their specific genre. So Dungeons & Dragons was a fantasy, most often a dungeon crawl, but not necessarily. Uh, Star Wars was always set in Star Wars. Uh, different games like Shadowrun, other things like that that have their own niche, their own genre. And GURPS would let you play a dungeon crawler for one adventure or one campaign and then you could also play a space uh, sci-fi game in another adventure or other campaign. So um, my first experience with GURPS was when I began reading the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. The friends that got me to start reading that series also were playing GURPS in that same setting. So uh, two things, I didn't read much before that and it helped me get into reading through having the game and uh, reading the book at the same time and so just a new experience, new everything pulling together and it uh, really made things a lot more fun. So that was my first experience with GURPS with my first uh, game master being Master Burston and uh, Dunn was playing in that. Dunn and I were both friends in that game uh, through an odd turn of events in, in game. But so that is what GURPS stands for. Depending on how familiar you are with a pen and paper role playing game, there are different types of, of role-playing games. Um, GURPS is one where the players take on the roles of their characters and sit around the table. You make decisions for your characters, you choose what your characters are going to do, and then you have specific abilities or stats, like in GURPS you have strength, dexterity, IQ, health, um, and you use those in conglomeration with skills and things to be able to decide if your character is going to be able to do that. You roll dice and if you get the correct dice roll then your character is able to succeed in what they're doing. That is the type of role playing game that GURPS is. Um, friends sitting around the table and uh, taking on the role of their characters. You also have someone running the game in GURPS, it's the Game Master in Dungeons & Dragons, it's the Dungeon Master, referred to as the DM for Dungeon Master or GM for Game Master. Um, and they they run the story, they run every all the other players that the actual, or all the other characters the actual players are not playing as, and they're a referee of sorts. Why would someone choose GURPS over any other system? Every system I have experience with has its has where it excels and also where it might be lacking and when you're choosing a role playing game to play um, there's not really one com one system that I think is better than that it all out is better than another system. Um, a lot of it comes down to what your friends want to play or the group that you're playing that you find to play with wants to play. That is usually what determines who what, what game you're going to play or what system you're going to use. For me, uh, GURPS as a person running the game, as a game master, GURPS is the only one that I run because it's the system that I like best and that's just a personal preference. Um, some of the reasons that I choose that preference is I enjoy that GURPS can be set in any setting. 
I enjoy that I have control over uh, where my character's abilities go and, and I can choose what I want to improve as the game goes on. Um, one of the differences for GURPS from other, other systems is uh, more often than not, you have your character, you build your character, and as your character levels up, certain abilities and certain stats go up with that improvement. Um, in GURPS, you gain character points, and you can put those character points into different stats or different skills to improve those skills, and I have more control over where I want to take my character than just the predetermined they get better this way. And I enjoy that it is very easily adaptable to any type of game that I'm wanting to play. So if I decided to play a Warhammer 40,000 campaign in GURPS, and instead of playing Warhammer where you're taking the big army and fighting, or even the kill team version where you have a squad of, or a, a small group of elite soldiers going in and fighting, and if I was going to do a GURPS Warhammer campaign, I the players would be able to take on the role of an individual soldier and take on that role and work together and play through the game that way. Um, and or uh, whether it's a swashbuckling, which is what we're playing right now with the group that I play that I'm playing with currently, um, with some. Uh, supernatural things thrown in as we're playing it with World of Darkness, so the vampires, werewolves, fey done by uh, White Wolf. Um, and so just interesting for me, that, that's reasons that I choose GURPS because it has the opportunity to use a broad envelope that I can pull things into and use what I want to play. When it really comes down to it, it's all up to what fits your needs and what your friends or your what group you can find to play with. Another reason that I don't choose to run different games, I I don't like having so many rule sets stuck in my head. I already have that problem with my war games and getting which rule fits which war game confused is a common problem for me, but and I'd rather not have that in my uh, when I'm running a game, <laughs> getting different rule sets confused and then my players being frustrated because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so that for me is why I choose the one. What do you need to play GURPS? If you're going to run GURPS, the basic characters and basic campaigns set of books. The characters one is very handy to have for your players. To build their characters, so if you're just a player in GURPS, I would suggest getting that, but uh, getting both of them is the best place to start. You can find those on Warehouse 23, there's plenty of places to buy them digital or the hard copies. GURPS is produced by Steve Jackson Games, they're the same ones who do Munchkin and, and some other games. There is an immense library of supplemental books out there. For, to broaden your games and to help you as a person running the game or as a player be able to become more in depth in how you're building your characters or how you're building your worlds. Um, they have certain worlds already set up and already uh, established for you. So one of those supplemental books is Bainstorm. It's got a very broad world already filled out for you, already done. So as a GM, uh, setting up your game, you can read through there and you have the whole world already built. I prefer to build my own worlds, not necessarily from scratch always. Um, I enjoy taking things from either books I've read and building a world in that book, like the first game that I played where uh, Master Burston had built a game based on, or built our world based on the series, the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. Um, and that was a lot of fun. But then there are lots of books, like there's a powers book that talks about how to have different powers, whether you're doing a supers, like a, a Marvel or DC or a comic book superhero type campaign, which can be a lot of fun. Um, 
And then there are uh, lots of supplemental books based on fantasy, uh, sci-fi, uh, martial arts. Um, there, it just any uh, almost anything you could want to expand into. There are uh, supplemental books for those things. Uh, one thing I have done is I, if I'm doing a game in a specific genre that already has an RPG system or things like that that I but I don't want to learn the new system so I want to I, I just want to play in that world using the GURP system I might buy some of those uh, books and then uh, GURPS has a it's very easy to convert things to GURPS and uh, there are some tips in the campaigns book that teach you that and in some other supplements so I might buy a RPG system or a supplement book and uh, so that I have reference material and so that I have a better way to understand how to convert that. There are also lots of uh, supplemental material that have just other people running games and other people who put together and put out there for people to use and they've done some of the work for you. Sometimes when I'm using those, I, I don't necessarily like exactly what they've done, so I tweak some things, but it's a very good place to start. How do you actually play GURPS? GURPS is played with using six-sided dice or D6. Each player needs to have at least three D6. That's the most common dice roll in the game. The point limit that the Game Master sets will determine how many points you have to build your character from. So you spend these points on your characteristics and then you on your attributes and then you spend points on advantages and there are many many advantages to to look through and find out what they do and then you have your skills that you can buy and again this is a long list of skills using this example of a character sheet we have here Ragnar Hemmingsen uh, the player for this character is Tanner who uh, You've seen, if you've watched some of our other videos, you've seen Tanner in some of those. Um, the point total for this campaign was 120 points. Um, then he has there, his character is 6'5", uh, weighs 120, size modifier 0. That relates to things in combat and how, or, or in game, and how things interact can make them harder to hit, easier to hit, different things like that. Um, then his age is 23. He has zero unspent points because he has not played with this character yet, so he's not gained any points. And then his appearance, he has long blonde hair, blonde full beard, and a muscular build. Then we come down here to the attributes, and you see there he has a strength of 13. The human average on attributes is 10, so he is above average on his uh, strength. Dexterity is 12. Again, 10 is the average, so a little above average. IQ is 12, uh, health is 12, so he is above average in every every category there. Then his HP or his hit points, which is based off strength, um, is 13, and his will and perception are 12, and those are both based on IQ. And then his fatigue points are 12. Hit points are the damage that you can take in the game um, and how that will affect you. Once you take, so in his example, once he takes 13 hit points, that doesn't mean he's automatically dead, but it does have certain indications in the game. And fatigue points is your energy. A wizard will use this for mana, but also you can use fatigue to do things in combat, and combat can cost fatigue, and so can other, other things. It can take fatigue depending on if you are going for a long time. Running for a long time will, will take fatigue and things like that. Then below that you have basic lift, which is again determined off strength, and then your damage, which is based off strength as well. So thrust is when you are pushing into something and he has one dice damage, and swing is when you are using your arms to swing something and you have that uh, force added into it and it's his is two dice minus one. So that what that means is he rolls two dice and subtract one from it. Now that can be modified based on different weapons that he may be carrying and things like that. Then his basic speed, which is based on his dexterity and health, is 6, and his basic move is 6 as well. 
Um, and that is just a measurement in the game as to how far you can you can move. Uh, your encumbrance shows your move and your dodge based on how much weight you're carrying. Um, your dodge is your move plus three. Then he has the advantage of charisma. And one of the things that I forgot to mention earlier is disadvantages and quirks. So where you have 120 points to spend, you can get disadvantages and quirks and they will give you points back to spend on your character. So he has spent 35 points in disadvantages. Um, so that he was really his the the total points into his character 155, but only but because he took these points and disadvantages, they have uh, he's gotten those points back. And disadvantages are not always negative things. Honesty is a disadvantage, and being honest is a good thing. But it has a in-game mechanic in the fact that you are it is difficult for you to break the law. Same with, there's the disadvantage of truthfulness. Well, telling the truth is a good thing, and we all favor people who tell the truth. But in the game mechanics, you're either a bad liar, or it's hard for you to lie, and you don't want to lie. It's one of those things just to be aware of, that when you take disadvantages, they have consequences, or they can have consequences. Um, then, over here, you see that he has language. Um, and language has two categories, spoken and native, and he has both of those. So his native language is Danish, and then he has accented Latin and Spanish. Again, this is for a swashbuckling campaign, and he is spending his time down in Spain right now, or the campaign is starting in Spain. So that's where he is uh, currently at. So he has taken Spanish, and you see his Danish language costs zero points, Latin is four points and Spanish is four points. Um, his Latin is primarily because he has some uh, religious connections and so uh, he was trained in seminary a little bit and so he speaks and reads Latin for church related activities. You see there that he has reaction modifiers. Um, those come into play quite often. Um, he has a plus one for charisma and a conditional plus two or minus two from overconfident. So overconfident is a disadvantage you can take, which sometimes helps you in the fact that young and naive people, when they hear you uh, blustering about whatever it is that you've done or you can do, ooh, they think, oh, he's cool. But more experienced people um, kind of look at you and say, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it and uh, kind of think, Ne react negatively to use. Then you see here that he has skills. So he has animal handling and uh, his level is 11. Then you have the relative skill level which is IQ minus one and that's important because sometimes things in game, magic items, different things like that can change your stat level, your attribute. So if his attribute went up by two then it would it would be IQ minus one would be 13 instead of 11. And then you see out there the number in parentheses, that's how many points he spent in that skill. Um, but then Axe Mace, which is using an axe, a one-handed axe, uh, then you see that he's got it at 12 and it's dexterity based and it costs two points to get there. Um, and then it shows there underneath his parry is nine. So in situations where he can parry an attack, and he has his axe in his hand, he can parry that by uh, rolling three dice and getting under nine. And that is how these, these skills work. You roll your dice, your three dice, and you want to roll less than your skill. So you can see here that as a beginning character at 120 points, he's not amazing at the things that he does. He's pretty good, but you look at an, a skill with an axe of or uh, his axe skill of 12 and rolling three dice and getting under 12, that's only gonna happen slightly more than half the time. On this second page, you see that he has his weapons listed there. 
and you can see that the axe has a damage stat of two dice plus one cutting. So the mechanics between that is the axe uses his swing damage because it's a swinging weapon and it adds a modifier to it so uh, it increases his swing damage and then the cut has another modifier to it that will add to the damage that you're doing um, when you are using that weapon in certain situations. Then it shows there his level, his parry, and the, the strength. But that is how to play GURPS in a nutshell. So let me know if you have any questions or if you're interested in learning more. Um, as I said, I'm running, it, I'm running a campaign right now with uh, some friends and family, and I will start probably doing a campaign diary, some campaign diary videos just about that as it progresses. Um, let me know if people are interested in that or not. Hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time.